Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Sunday, April 21st, 2019, and I wish everybody observing the Easter holiday um, good health, have a great meal, have a great time with your family, and for those celebrating Passover and whatever holidays, have a great time, guys. That's all. Eat, drink, and be merry, and be careful. Alright guys, well I have a very interesting video here today and it's because of Ziggy Dan who watched my previous video on San Esteban in uh, Belize um, getting bulldozed down and as a matter of fact I went back and forth Chuck from CF Baths watched my video he had just done this one this is his latest one the huge stonework San Andres site in uh, El Salvador and uh, I'm going to talk about this site too at a later date because I have a friend that I work with who's going back to El Salvador in like 30 days so I wanted to do a sort of a tribute to him tribute you know, presentation on El Salvador because he wasn't aware of any ruins in his country. He really wasn't. So in any case, Chuck and I were going back and forth about it and um, I had forgot to mention in the video that they caught the guys doing this and what happened was they fined the company $24,000, the uh, construction company. So you really think that's a deterrent? $24,000 fine for some commercial construction company that's building roads. There's no incentive there, folks. And, you know, they can just keep on violating this thing again and again. So Chuck and I were going back and forth and, you know, he had he had read about this too and, you know, he said he was going to do a follow-up. I hope he does, really, because really needs to be talked about and he has a big audience and you know this is the only way this is the only thing we could do is you know make people aware of this stuff and you know Chuck smelled a rat and I smell a rat you know Chuck's from Sin City Las Vegas and I'm from the Big Apple New York okay and we both smell a rat okay they were doing this back in the in uh, the 1990s and they said they were going to take care of it and stop it and they're doing nothing okay and we all know why okay we weren't born yesterday okay these sites could be secured if they wanted them to be but I, again i don't hear the outrage of archaeologists and anthropologists you know except for here and there and it's all lip service. What are they doing about it? This, you know, this takes money, you know, to combat, really. But the government of Belize should be doing more. It's, you know, it's in their best interest. They have for tourism, etc. So it's just local people are getting payoffs and, you know, you know the whole story. I don't have to go over it. So Chuck and I were going to watch it. So maybe he'll do a follow-up video. I hope so. But um, Ziggy Ban, who is like, like our own person, like all us, you know, research buddies here that come to my channel, like Bill from the Ancient Alternative View and Andrew from Ancient History Criticisms and other people, you know, we're just looking at each other's videos and Ziggy Dan is like a adjunct researcher, he's always finding this great stuff to look at and um, he made a comment here that's very interesting arc on site at Oxtanka it looks more Roman than mine and it just reminded me of something here it is by the way they call it an open air chapel you know built by the Spanish um, conquistadors and you know it has a roman style arch there okay but who's to say see this is the thing who's to say the romans invented the art we don't know that that's an assumption 
you know, and they'll, they'll say, well, we don't, we haven't found evidence for it, so therefore, you know, they're the, the only ones we know of. Or what. Yeah, they're the only ones you know of, you know? Who knows? We don't know because we don't know the proper history, okay? So, in any case, in this article, it refers to another site, this uh, weird name here. I have it here somewhere. And here's a similar style, open air chapel. And you know, there's no doubt that the Spanish had knowledge of Roman building style, Roman building methods of construction, design, etc., etc., because they have aqueducts that run through their country. Okay? But this just reminded me of, you know, what Ziggy Dan had said about, you know, this Roman style archway, etc., about the aqueducts that are found in Mexico, all right? And if you don't know anything about them, there are aqueducts in Mexico. And they're very interesting Roman, you know, style aqueducts. And you can see, you know, the scale of some of these things. I think of this one supposedly was built by monks. You know, in their spare time, I guess. In between studying and uh, trying to survive. But, in any case, there's all these aqueducts in Mexico. And I remembered from Sylvia on the New Earth channel, um, she had gone over this. And she sort of begged the question. And I, it's very difficult to find it in her videos. I wish I could. Maybe one of you guys knows which one it is, but she had begged the question of it, and I think there wasn't, you know, proper attribution for these things. So, you know, I looked into it today. I was at the library earlier, and I've been looking at the stuff all night long here. It's like the early morning. I work every day, guys, so I'm, I'm beat to crap when I do these videos. So I apologize for it. Apologize for my New York speech affect and, uh, you know, colloquialisms and stuff. It's just, you know, I spent a lot of time on the street to the city, man, as an adult. And I've been homeless before. I also lived in the forest. So I didn't live in the woods. I lived in the forest, okay? And I'm a pretty damn good woodsman at that and a safe one. Okay, guys, well, <clears throat> you know, I, Cecilia had mentioned this in her videos, and <clears throat> I looked into it a little bit, and it's funny, I went to Wikipedia just to look at it, and you can see here it says aqueducts in Mexico here, and they give a list of three. Okay, unfortunately, there's many more aqueducts in Mexico built that, you know, in the past. But they're only given three here. These two, they attribute Aqueduct of Padre Temblec and Chapultec Aqueduct. They attribute to Spanish explorers and settlers, okay, and monks in the church and uh, you know, some have attribution, others don't, and this Tecoatl one is uh, strictly a, you know, native peoples one, you know, by one of these societies. They just, they, they don't even show a picture, it's a stone canal, making a part of an extension ancient aqueduct network in the Tehuacan Valley in the state of Puebla in Mexico. The word Tecahuatl translates to stone snake. Very interesting in, in the Aztec language, not waddle. But the canal system is far older than the Aztecs. The first segments of the system were laid down approximately 2,500 years ago. Okay? 
<coughs> okay, so it says is further studies revealed that the Tagrados make up the longest prehistoric irrigation system in the New World. At one point, 1,200 kilometers of stone canals provided water to 330 kil kilometers squared of cultivated land in the Tehuacan Te Te Valley. Okay? So that is just amazing right there. Okay. However much the Spanish, you know, built their own aqueduct systems, whatever they were. Okay, this is aqueducts in Spain. Only a couple of them the Spanish built. Most of them are Roman. Okay. And let's take a look at one of these. Okay. Here's one for you. In Spain, Roman style and check it out andrew from ancient history criticisms bevel block bro bevel block and andrew specializes in bevel block it's very interesting andrew that this has bevel block and let me show you another one going out to andrew i think it's this one here no here it is. Bevel block. And do. Check it out, man. You need to look into this, my friend. Aqueducts with bevel block. Check it out. And you can see the style construction here. Okay? Roman style. Very, very well done. Very well done, as opposed to the newer ones, which seem more crudely fashioned, okay? Take this Alatana one, look at this one here. And who knows who built this? This is built with like megalithic sized stones or whatever. It looks like a concrete style aqueduct. It's in the Spanish Heritage Register, so. And look at this one. Okay, so this one right here was built in the, let me get a focus on it, okay. Okay, so. Um, you can see this style is built in the eight, late 18th century in Spain, okay, aqueduct of Algexerus, okay, and it says it's one of the most important buildings in Algexerus, Spain, numerous textbook dictionaries, guidebooks cite this building as Arabic or Roman, but it was built in the 18th century, okay. So, they just figured that out. So, in any case, they, well, they have, so apparently they have some good documentation. And that should be hardly surprising because the Spanish were very highly developed with their, you know, data collecting. And, you know, you can go through ship manifest with every single artifact and doubloon and everything else brought back from the New World. You're telling me that they have things with no attribution that they can't figure out. So, who knows? This could be all part of the, you know, um, revisionist history or, you know, we don't know if the timelines are correct or anything, but it says the architect of the project was this Pablo Casas under the supervision of Master Plumber Florindo, who had just completed a similar construction in Puerto Real. It has a series of arches of stone and brick with buttresses. Okay, so this is their, you know, more modern one built in the late 18th century. 
<clears throat> and you can see it's got the Roman arch and everything. So it's hardly surprising that these other sites have these Roman style arches that may have been built by the Spanish. But again, who knows? We don't know what the attributions are. And I find it hard to believe in the case of some of these things that were supposedly built by these people were not documented fully by the Spanish because they were totally into that. Okay? The Spanish Inquisition kept lists and lists and lists of books that they burned. All the titles to the books, all the books that they burned, just like extremely well cataloged. And everything was run by the church back then. Okay, guys? So... None of this baloney, they don't know, they can't figure it out, it's, uh, you know, it's vague and uh, they, uh, amorphous. Baloney, okay? I call baloney. I call BS on that, okay? So let's look at a couple of these um, <coughs> aqueducts in uh, Mexico, okay? Here's a few of them, okay? This one here. On the left, supposedly built by monks, okay, in their spare time, supposedly, okay, so let's look at some of these things, yeah, okay, and this is an interesting little article here about these private little aqueducts, okay, that nobody knows anything about, so this is Jalisco Hacienda aqueducts. Right, so it's more aqueducts in Mexico than listed, you know, back from supposed, you know, Spanish colonial times, right? Not listed in Wikipedia for some reason. I mean, some of these look ancient, really ancient. One looks like more more like a regular Roman built aqueduct. Okay, so it is like these, you know, private haciendas with uh, these aqueducts that are not mentioned by uh, Wikipedia in the Wikipedia article here. They sort of left that out. Right. Uh, the Spain one. Three, right? But there's more. Okay, this one is talking about the Aqueduct of Salpa, also known as Arcos del Sitio, that was built in the 18th century. This monumental piece is considered to be the tallest aqueduct in Latin America. There's more than 50 arches carrying water from nearby rivers to the town of Tepatzolden. The aqueduct is located in an idyllic gorge. It is a popular site for zipline and picnic Sunday strolls. However, the highlight is walking across the gorge of this ancient aqueduct. Okay, but the road isn't well maintained, but you know, you have this ancient aqueduct built by people hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but you can't can't build a road that gets there. Nope. Can't do that. All right. It's a beautiful looking thing. <clears throat> and maybe this was built by the Spanish in the uh, 18th century. I don't know, but you know, certainly they're capable of doing that, but obviously in Spain there, um, you had Roman ones too, and they were mistaking them and all this kind of stuff. So here's another one, okay, at Atumba Hildago, built in the 1540s. Is that mentioned here? Nope. Not mentioned there for some reason in Wikipedia. Okay, the aqueduct at Otumba, Hidalgo, Mexico, built in the 1540s. Listen to this. Purportedly under the direction of Fray Francisco de Temblac. Okay, as cited from, I guess, research by this guy Valdez in 61, but 
purportedly does not connote a certainty, okay? And that's just hard to believe with the Spanish keeping such accurate records and the church keeping such accurate records. Everything cost money. Everything had to be okay. All this kind of stuff. And purportedly, I don't think so. Okay. And notice the style construction. It's like Adobe. Okay. This uh, on some site here, Earth Matters, with 12 astounding aqueducts. And one of them is this Querétaro Aqueduct. Roman style aqueduct built. Roman style aqueduct in the middle of a Mexican metropolis? Sure, why not? <clears throat> one of a small handful of Spanish colonial aqueduct bridges still standing in Mexico. The aqueduct of Santiago de Cortaro is arguably the most photogenic. The 75 arch stone behemoth, which crosses over the Pan American Highway at one point, supplied Cortaro's capital city with drinking water well into the 20th century and to this day still supplies water to the fountains scattered about Guarantaro's World Heritage Site listed old city. So it's a pretty complicated system, but who knows who added what when. Okay, so they say this, completed in 1738, legend has it, legend has it, that the aqueduct was commissioned by the Marquis del Villa de Aguilla, as a grandois testament of his undying love for a beautiful yet unattainable woman named Clarissa. You see, Clarissa just happened to be a nun belonging to the convent of Santa Clara. Okay, within this, he had a question. Mark, he believed that erecting a massive aqueduct would spiritually connect him with the off limits octave of his affection or something like that. Yeah. Okay. How stupid do you really think I am, it's ball? I mean, you got to think one thing, too. With all these little articles and everything, you can't get to the bottom of everything. They cite, they quote, you know, work by whoever, anthropologists, historians, um, archaeologists, whoever they do, and these books or whatever, you'd have to go there, and then you find out it's purportedly, and maybe, and probably, and they can't, attributed to anybody and whatnot, okay, and it's a legend, and, and you know, it's baloney stories, okay, so I find it hard to believe that, you know, they have to rely on legends and purported stuff, and monks build them, built them, you know, I've read in one of the articles, but supposedly some monks built one of them, and there's more than the three they list in Wikipedia for some reason. There's not any others listed there. Private ones owned by colonial Spanish people on their haciendas and whatnot, supposedly. Okay? But don't forget, we read in all these books, C.W. Saram, Charles C. Mann's book, that none of these colonialists and settlers had any trouble Moving into an, an depopulated native people's settlement site. And no problem moving right in there. And, you know, what is the, you know, they mention it in one of the articles here on the, um, the open air, you know, um, chapels, right? That, um, I think I forgot what I was going to say, but, um, sorry guys, I was distracted by something. Um, they say that, you know, the, the Spanish were in the habit of building their churches and chapels, um, on the, the grounds of these, you know, uh, ancient people cities and whatnot, as similar to what the Romans did. They had no problem moving in and occupying areas and claiming it as their own. And many, many people's reading in Charles C. Mann's book, 1491, that the peoples of the Mesoamerica and South America also, the kings there, rewrote their histories and everything else. So, 
How is this hardly surprising? So we don't know what's what. They can't attribute these things to anybody. I I don't see them not keeping accurate records about these things. I'm sorry, it's just not believable. All right, and you have to wonder where these things came from. And some people are going to say these may be from the Tartarian, you know, worldwide empire, the Tartarian Empire from Tartar Tartary, Grand Tartary. Maybe for all we know, okay? We don't know. See, that's the thing. It's that history is so jumbled up, and they hide things from us, and then when, you know, they hide things from us, people, draw, you know, jump to all kinds of conclusions. But out of necessity, they can't explain it, and they've been sort of omitting it, you know, which is like a lie, all right? So, in any case, I don't see, you know, monks... Building this thing, all right, to you, and look at the fine work here. How much do you think it costs to build today, by hand, no machinery involved? How much do you think it would cost, and how long do you think it would take, by hand? Been a long time. Alright guys, so anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. It's just very interesting with these aqueducts and what they're doing in Mexico. And they don't have any good solid attributions, maybe for a couple. And we know the native peoples there were expert, you know, aqua engineers and work with water, did all kinds of things. We all know about that, okay? Whatever the Spanish took, they took from the Romans who got them from who knows who. You know, half these civilizations spring up out of nowhere and fully formed and they don't understand and blah, blah, blah. So, in any case, guys, just something to think about. And, um, you know, maybe you can catch Sylvia's video on her channel. I don't know which one it is. If I find out, I'll let you know. All right?